come to a place in your life where you're willing to openly admit and confess and say aloud that you believe you struggle with anger, I want to start by commending you. Confession is one of the most powerful things that we can do as followers of Christ because confession is what moves us from hiding under shame and guilt and brings us to a place to live and walk in the freedom of God's grace, the freedom paid through by the sacrificial lamb by Jesus, the Son of God, because we're all sinners. The Bible says that if you say that you're without sin, that you make God a liar, that you say that the word is a lie, that the Bible is a lie, that God's truth is a lie, we have to believe that. So step number one, again, if you believe you struggle with anger, I commend you, so let's talk about it. What does that mean? I am in my mid-40s right now, and for most of my adult life, I have been one of two things. I have either been a quote-unquote Christian, because I gave my life to the Lord early in my 20s, or I have been someone who has been rebelling against God because of sin, and the source of that sin was anger. And I got the privilege of going through a ministry that allowed me and a group of men to sit down daily and spend time with the Lord studying the scriptures to find out what is the source of my sin struggle because everyone has their own and it was then that the Holy Spirit re revealed to me plainly through the scripture the scripture I'm going to share with you today that I do indeed struggle with anger and it may be the proverbial thorn in my side like Paul said Paul said that he will always carry certain sin struggles because, again, everyone is a sinner. But there's power in admitting that you are a sinner because you transfer the responsibility and the burden of being that sinner or carrying that sin from yourself, which we're not designed to carry it, to God, to Jesus, through the cross because the penalty for my sin was already paid for by Jesus on the cross. He paid the penalty for your sins and for mine. So the first thing I had to admit was that I believed that I was a sinner and that I agreed with the Lord that I was a sinner and my sin struggle was anger. And that's when the Holy Spirit revealed to me that it was indeed anger. The Bible says in Matthew chapter six, verse 21, for where, the, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also where your treasure is, there's your heart. The Hebrew term or the Greek word used for treasure in that verse isn't riches, isn't a pot of gold like American society has downplayed this concept of what treasure is. A treasure in the Greek concept of that word implies anything stored and collected. So picture a storehouse, picture a shed. If you have a shed in your house and you have tons of things in there, or if you're like me, you have a garage just full of stuff, you could technically call that a treasure because it's a storehouse of things. So understand in Matthew 6, 21, it says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Why is that important? Because the treasure, whatever it is you're storing and collecting, signifies and represents your heart. Not your physical heart, not the little cartoon heart that people draw, not the organ, but the concept of the essence of who you are in your being, in your soul, your treasure or what you're storing and collecting represents your heart. The Bible also says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Think about this for a second. Out of the abundance of the heart, and we already know the heart represents a storehouse, things that I am storing and collecting. Out of the abundance of the heart, my mouth speaks. So, like myself, if you've ever found yourself saying ugly things to people, especially the people you love, we always hurt the people that are closest to us because we're that comfortable in our love for them that we do allow them to see the ugly side of us that we don't show to the whole world. So if you've ever said something hurtful, something mean, something hateful, and then immediately said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that, that's a direct indication that you're, you're struggling with anger. And I hate to tell you this, but big, biblically speaking, that's a lie. You're not sorry, and you did mean to say it. In your mind, you might not thought you should say it, but again, if the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and the Bible also goes on to say, in Matthew 15, verse 18, it says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. So if I saw you and I cussed you out and I called you ugly names and I said hurtful things to you and immediately I turn around and say, hey, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I'm a liar. And I'm making the gospel a lie. 
because I'm refusing to see that what came out of my mouth is a direct reflection of things that I'm storing and collecting against you personally. And what is that, Bobby? What is this thing that I could be storing and collecting about another person that's causing me to say hurtful things towards them? It comes down to three things, bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. When I discovered that and the Holy Spirit really pointed that out to me and said, look, your treasure and the things that are coming out of your mouth, that the smallest things in the world were trigger me. When small little things set you off on a course to say hurtful things to people that you love, to cuss out people that you love, to over discipline your children, to humiliate them, to slander them, to slander people close to you. That's a direct sign of anger, bitterness, bitterness and resentment stored in someone's heart that they refuse to acknowledge and because we don't acknowledge the sin and we don't acknowledge the hurts and pains which are the results of sin because we're hiding like Adam and Eve who hid from God in the garden shielding themselves with plants which basically represented shame and guilt so when Eve covered herself up in a top and a bottom and Adam covered himself up probably with a bottom, you could just picture in your mind that those leaves represented shame and guilt. They were hiding from a God that already knew what they'd done and he already knew where they were because the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter three that God went into the garden after the fall of man, after Adam and Eve had sinned and asked Adam aloud, where are you? It's not that the God who just created the heavens and earth didn't know where Adam was hiding in the garden. He was asking Adam, where are you in your heart that you believe that you have to hide from me, your father, your creator? Adam and Eve were hiding behind the sin, shame and guilt, which is why I said at the beginning of this message that confession is the power to move from shame and guilt, to agree with the God who already knows what sin you committed because you're aligning with him and in agreement with him you experience the grace of a loving father that says I forgive you that's why David in Psalm 51 verse 6 said created me a clean heart he also said in Psalm 119 verse 11 thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you David understood that the source of who we are and what we say and what comes out of our mouth which then thereby determines the actions of our life are a direct reflection of the state of our heart. So if you're like me and you struggle with anger for a long time, I want to commend you and I want to encourage you to confess it out loud. You have to speak it out loud so that you're not living under the umbrella of shame and guilt any longer that you agree with the God that already knows that you're a sinner. He still loves you because the Bible says that while we were still yet dead in our sin Christ died for us he died for us even knowing I was gonna be a sinner even knowing I was gonna hurt the people in my life that I love the most with these cruel wicked words until the day came that the Holy Spirit brought me to a place to see that those cruel wicked words are not accidents that I don't get to hide behind the world's excuse of I'm sorry, which is selfish by the way, because I'm sorry says to someone, I don't want to hear you anymore. But I apologize says I own it. Asking for forgiveness shows that I understand that I hurt you. And when I understood that I was carrying bitterness and resentment towards other people, to the point that when I saw these people, I started identifying by their sin struggle, instead of seeing them through the eyes that God wants us to see other people through, which is just to see them as people struggling with sin, no different than me. That's when the healing began. That's when I started coming to a place that God started removing the stones from my heart. And like David, I got on my knees. I confessed with God that I am a sinner. I confessed with God that I struggle with anger. I got on my knees and I humbled myself before the living God and I said, create in me a clean heart. Remove the stones from my heart so that I can be healed. Remove the stones of my heart of bitterness and resentment, which are nothing more than hurts and pains that I haven't addressed because other people hurt me and I hurt other people as a result of that. And then I had to learn forgiveness. Forgiveness is understanding, like Jesus says, that even though we say the model prayer, 
and we ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins and forgive us of our trespasses, right? Jesus goes on to say that if we don't forgive others, our Heavenly Father won't forgive us. And I don't think the American church does enough time focusing on that, that we might think that we got on our knees, we might think that we said, ah, oh, Lord, forgive me, but because there's not a heart change, because we don't truly mean it in our heart that we are remorseful, that we want to repent and turn away from the behavior, there's really no forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35, we read the story of the servant and the king, and Jesus gives the perfect an analogy to his disciples when he talked about forgiveness. And how there was a servant who owed the king a, a huge amount of debt that he could not repay, and the king said, because you can't repay it, I'm gonna sell you and your wife and your children to pay back the debt, and that slave threw himself at, God, at the king's feet and pleaded for mercy. And because the king was compassionate and he was moved with compassion, which is pity and love for another human being, he forgave him the debt and he freed him from being a servant. He freed him from the bondage of slavery. And but that same servant, as you'll read in the story, is that same servant went off to go find someone who owed him a debt, choked them, physically assaulted them, and then try to lock them up for not paying the debt. And of course that king punished that servant because he told him you should have had compassion towards your fellow servant or your brother and sister in Christ. As I had on you, says the Father to us. So my encouragement again is if, if you struggle with anger, own it, confess it. And how do you know again? Because the things that come out of your mouth are never an accident. The world might say you didn't mean them. But if we're Christians, we don't love the world, nor do we conform to the ways or the wisdom of the world. We conform to God's wisdom, and that's biblical truth, and that's accepting and owning the fact that we have sin, and that sin is the result of hurts and pains that become bitterness and resentment that we store and collect in the storehouse of our heart. And that's why, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's why Matthew goes on to say in chapter 15, verse 11, it's not that which goes into the mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. So my encouragement for you is, if you want to transfer the power and the struggle of your anger, getting away from self-help books and motivational speakers and get down to the true source, which is nothing more than hurts and pains caused by sin, surrender to God, confess to God, ask Him to give you a clean heart and then store his word in your heart. And we know from the book, from the Gospel of John that the word of God is Jesus, Yeshua, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Studying the scripture, spending time with the Lord, building up your faith, building up your confidence in the Lord is what's gonna give you a renewed heart and a renewed confidence in him. And then the things that will be coming out of your mouth will be the gospel message. And don't forget, that's what Jesus called us to do, to go and make disciples and to share the gospel message. Amen.